Hello, and thank you for joining the ABCs of CRM webinar. We really wish there was enough time to cover the A to Z, but the 30 to 40 minutes that we have um, a lot of for today just isn't enough time. Before we get into the product, I thought it would be best to give our building blocks a solid foundation to build upon. Companies used to thrive with a one-size-fits-all approach to their customers. Think the days of Mad Men. I think we can all kind of create in our mind what it was, uh, what sales and marketing was like for them at that time. In the early days of advertising, messages did get to their audiences, but there was little data to show whether those messages were resonating through, you know, that customer's journey, where there are marketing analytics where we could see that they were interacting with some of those campaigns that we had going on. And at the time, the brands were powerful. Their messages were delivered um, in a very broad kind of inside-out context. And I think we all know technology, the Internet of Things, has changed that by giving individuals a very powerful voice. So listen to some of these interesting statistics. 72% of all Internet users are now active on social media. 72% of leads that are being generated go untouched. Imagine if you could get to those leads within one to two hours, how that would um, impact the bottom line for your business. And that's proven that you know, experience is, is what drives loyalty. And over, um, there's a study that was done in about over two-thirds of people that have changed brands as because of an experience. And I think we can all probably, we've probably been there a time or two. And then last but not least, uh, the analyst firm Gartner says that in 2020, there'll be over 26 billion connected devices. So I think that equates out to about 58 connected products per person. And again, this is driving the way customers are using products and um, ultimately you know, their experiences. So companies have responded by focusing on those experiences and understanding that customer's journey is critical to their success. And that's where CRM comes into play. That's a way to integrate your technology, maybe your business practices and processes, and combine them with the customer data to cr create a robust exchange of information to develop meaningful, beneficial customer relationships. So again, the better you understand your customers, the more responsive you can be uh, to their needs, um, ultimately grow your business, um, and keep those that you have happy. So again, understanding that uh, customer's journey throughout their lifespan with you. At Ledgeview Partners, we offer both dynamic CRM as well as Salesforce. For the purpose of today's demonstration, I'm going to be showing Microsoft Dynamic CRM. At a high level, Microsoft Dynamic CRM enables businesses by providing the most productive and the most flexible CRM solution to improve the productivity of your people. The areas that we'll be focusing on again during uh, the building blocks for today will be sales, marketing, and customer care. When you purchase Dynamic Serum, you have access to all of these. They're not in separate clouds or silos of data. In addition, Microsoft's strategy is to provide the best user experience across the broad set of browsers and devices. Spanning PCs, you know, being able to access Dynamic Serum right from within Outlook, the web, um, whether it's Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, and then by both popular demand or um, t today are mobile devices. So again, realizing the importance of empowering your people to have the data no matter where they are or what time of uh, day it is. So now that we have some of the basics covered um, and understanding uh, that customer's journey and, and how that can map to CRM, let's take a little closer look at, at what it's like to use Dynamic CRM to acquire your leads, build business, and then close deals. So in today's demonstration, we're going to walk through a day in the life of a marketing manager, a sales rep, as well as a customer service agent. The goal is to help give you a better understanding of how CRM can help you zero in, win deals faster, and again, manage that customer's journey as they work with your organization. I'll be using CRM 2016 today, so if you're on a previous version, you might notice some slight differences. Before we jump into the marketing manager role, a couple of things that I wanted to highlight from a um, navigation standpoint. Again, as users log in, they can um, personalize their experience. So you can do things like upload a profile picture. You can also have the system default as to where their homepage is. 
So again, as a marketing person, I want to see relevant marketing information, and I like to start my day within the dashboard. But once you're there, too, you can drill down into each area of the system for more information. So for marketing, I can navigate right from within the ribbon bar. From here, I can also um, see recently viewed items. Um, so maybe I'm an account manager and I have 12 accounts that I manage. I can pin those to my recently viewed items. I can also quickly create or add new records right from within the home page. So again, it's about giving your sales or your employees the tools to um, efficiently get through, get the information into CRM to be more productive. And then global search um, capabilities. So you can just type in a couple of letters and then it will automatically uh, search the system and bring back the related entities or records that meet that criteria. And then last but not least is the advanced find. So this is a more in-depth search uh, tool that you can pull data on several fields and, and look across the uh, entire system and save those views uh, for future uses as well. So that's, again, just from a navigation standpoint, how you can kind of get to the different areas of the system. So from here, let's go ahead and put on the marketing hat. And in this scenario, we're going to walk through a day in the life of a marketing manager. So in this section, we'll cover the ability to manage campaign activities, generate leads, qualify leads, and assign leads for follow-up. As a marketing manager, I like to start my day out in the dashboard feature. Again, I can see all the important relevant information for my department. So I can see things like the different campaigns that we have running, what, what types they are. Um, it's important for me to see kind of at a high level where are we at in terms of our campaign budget versus our actual cost. And with those campaigns that we're working on, I want to ensure that they're driving leads and opportunities for our sales team to work on. So it looks like we have some leads coming in. And then rounding it out, again, is being able to make sure that they're driving revenue for the business. So not only can you have charts of information, and we'll talk about later on in today's uh, presentation how you can actually drill down into these dashboards for, for more insight or information into them. But not only can you have charts, but you can also have a list of information. Maybe I have a certain task or phone calls that I need to get completed today. Again, I can see all that right from within the dashboard view. So now that I have a good pull from what's going on in the marketing area, I want to take a closer look at the leads that we have in our system. So leads are, they're cold prospects, someone that you haven't done business with before. They need to be qualified. Um, leads can get into the system a few different ways. Um, we showed earlier the quick create option. You can also manually create new leads, or you can also use the import um, feature inside of Dynamics to import maybe a list of leads that you got from a trade show or you purchased the list. So that uh, allows you to quickly get that data in so you can start nurturing those relationships. Um, and once you're in the leads, um, you, again, you see where you can have multiple views open. So maybe you want to see leads within a certain geography. You can create those views so they're automatically saved when you log in every time. For myself, I'm a very visual person, so I like to utilize uh, these charts um, on the right-hand side of the page. So for this particular one, I'm just looking at a chart set up based on the leads rating. So maybe I want to take a closer look at what are these three hot leads that we have. And again, you'll see in real time it filters that information down for me. So now that I have a kind of a good idea of um, the leads that we're generating, from here I want to go ahead and create a marketing list so I can segment this data for any of the campaigns um, that we have running or maybe some email marketing um, email blasts that we're going to be sending out. So I went ahead and uh, started a list earlier of targeting those warm leads. So when you go in and create a new marketing list, it's going to have you give it, um, a, a, you can give it a, a name, you can set the list type, is this a dynamic list um, versus maybe a, a static list. A static list is a one-time list pull, uh, whereas a dynamic list is a living, breathing uh, tool, so as, as leads change, uh, maybe their rating changes from cold to warm, they will dynamically get added to this list for you. And then last but not least is, who are we targeting for this? Is it a lead? Is it a contact? 
And then once you have that all set up, you can go ahead and manage your members to make sure that um, you know they're um, getting added to this marketing list. Um, from here too, if we wanted to go ahead and maybe further qualify or um, then maybe warm leads within a specific geography, again, just by going into the manage members, we can see that query. So here's the query that's pulling that information. And like I said, you can search against any of those fields you have set up in your system. So once we have our list um, set up, we've identified the members. Um, there's a couple of things I can um, utilize at this point. I can utilize something called the Quick Campaign feature. The Quick Campaign feature within Dynamics Theorem is a communication method that creates a single activity for distribution to a group of contacts or leads. So for example, maybe I want to have a quick call down for an event we're hosting next week. I can utilize that quick campaign to quickly attach the list, insert my script, and then assign those phone calls to the appropriate person for follow-up. Otherwise, I can attach this lead. It looks like we already have it connected with a product launch we have coming up, but a campaign supports an end-to-end -end marketing program. There's probably you know, likely multiple activities associated with it. It will take months to kind of pull this off. So again, it's more of an end-to-end -end, um, type of tracking. So based on some of the programs we have running, I've decided to host an event for our leads and prospects to help generate new business. So I'm going to go ahead and organize a campaign. So right, right within the marketing area, I'm going to navigate down to campaign. And you'll see we have several set up within the system already. Again, we've already launched this product uh, launch campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So from here, we can see the features inside of Dynamic Serum that are, um, are making it easier for me to plan and manage and, and track the activities that go into making this a su successful event. So once a campaign is created, it will automatically generate a campaign code that you can use for reporting purposes. But most importantly, too, you want to be setting you know, what's the expected response rate needed to generate that estimated revenue. But from a scheduling standpoint, making sure that you know, proposed and actual start and end times were on time. Um, the central area here, we can see any of those internal maybe uh, planning meetings, meeting with the product team, that's the way that we can manage those internal tasks. Um, we can also see any uh, marketing list associated with this campaign that we're targeting. And most importantly, too, we can see any leads that are coming into the system already being generated from the campaign activities. The last thing I wanted to cover before we go into those campaign activities is being able to track that financial information. So being able to see um, what was the allocated budget, where are we at for total cost. And so that total cost that's being driven by these campaign activities that we have set up. So if I open it, create a new product launch uh, marketing material activity, we can see right from within here how it will um, take us into that activity. We can see what the subject is. It's already associated with the campaign. Um, you know, when, when this was assigned uh, to the appropriate marketing team member, we can make sure from a scheduling standpoint things are staying on track. And then if you were working with any outside vendors, maybe to create new graphics, things like that, again, you can set the allocated budget and as that, the, the invoices are coming in and that's getting completed, you can um, keep track of the actual cost. And again, that's what's rolling up to that uh, campaign um, allocated um, versus the total cost. So let's go back into our campaign. So we've, um, at a very high level again, we've looked at what, it, what it's going to take um, to pull this event off. At any point in time, um, there's um, a report that comes with Dynamics Serum called the Campaign Performance. So at any point in time, I can run this report to see where things are at from a timing perspective, are we driving leads? Um, are those leads converting to revenue? So that um, it's a concise report. So if I need to present that to an executive committee, I can just go ahead and, and grab that information and present that. 
So now that we've reviewed the campaign activities that have made this event a success, let's take a look at how we can use Dynamic CRM to make the most of the leads that we have generated to get our sales team involved. So again, it's, um, at this particular organization, it's the marketing manager's responsibility for qualifying leads and distributing them to the appropriate sales reps. So from within here, again, we saw several leads that had been generated. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Allison Brown record. We're going to, it's going to tune right into that lead record. So within the lead, we can see that this is being driven from a particular seminar, um, probably one of our product events, product launch events. Um, this has already been given a rating um, based on maybe my conversations, Allison's interests. I'm going to actually bump them up to um, a hot rating. And then inside of Dynamic Serum, you can also utilize what's called the business process flow. And this will help really help create a consistent customer journey as um, th they transition from interacting with marketing to sales. So here we have um, at this particular Contoso organization have a very defined sales process and stages. So from a marketing standpoint, again, we, we need to make sure as we qualify, we're capturing all of the necessary and relevant information. And once that's done, I can drill down to, into the contact information to make sure everything is correct there, um, phone numbers, email, who the company is. And then as um, Allison works through kind of that nurturing process, we can keep track of any of those um, activities. Maybe I can create a new task to send um, marketing materials to her. And when I create that task, I can uh, give that a due date. I can set a priority. I can even assign that to someone else on my team to make sure that gets taken care of. And once that's created, whomever it's assigned to, it gets sent, they can just go ahead and mark as complete. So again, I'll just give you a rolling history of everything that that customer goes through on their buying journey. And then down below, too, you can track additional information, again, making sure it um, is attached to that campaign. So as Allison goes through that um, buying process and um, hopefully it ends up uh, purchasing from us, that any of that revenue gets tied back to that campaign. And then being able to set up contact preferences. So do they want to receive phone calls? We can switch that from do not allow to allow to make sure, again, that we're matching their expectations from, for, from us. So based on my um, conversations with Allison and their urgency for um, needing to, to get the, a new purchase in place, what I can do is um, with I, any lead, you either qualify or disqualify. So for the purpose of the demo, we're going to go ahead and remain positive. They need to move forward. We can go ahead and qualify this lead. So we can see it's taken us directly from that lead record right into the opportunity. And as this opportunity is uh, created, I can either have a workflow set up behind the scenes that will automatically assign this to the appropriate sales rep or I can manually go in and assign this to the correct individual to start working on to close the deal. So just like that, we've completed a full cycle for generating leads, distributing them to the appropriate um, sales rep for timely follow-up. So from here, now what we can do is we can go ahead and take off the marketing hat, um, and along that customer journey, we're going to transition over and put on the sales hat. So from within the sales scenario, we're going to walk through a day in the life of a salesperson. So from here, again, we're continuing with that customer on their journey, building that relationship, um, tracking any opportunities, um, and then ultimately, again, winning and closing that business. So from here, as a salesperson, again, when I log in, I want to see that relevant information. So from here, we have um, a chart that shows us just a sales pipeline of our opportunities. Maybe we have different goals set up. We want to make sure that our uh, sales team see what their goal is for their quarter. Um, in order to meet that goal, where do you need to be at today? And then also uh, some other information like a sales leaderboard for our sales team that is closing business. Um, you know, who is it? based on those opportunities, the number of deals being won versus lost. 
But like I mentioned earlier, with Dynamics Serum, um, you can actually interact with the dashboard data in real time. So if I wanted to take a closer look at um, what opportunities are sitting at this stage three proposed. So based on that, actually, I want to look at maybe the estimated revenue in a, in a list view. So we have several opportunities out here. Um, you know, there's this $2 million deal, you know, that would really help our team help meet the, the year-end or the quarter-end uh, quotas. So I want to see, you know, maybe what account is that for? Um, so it looks like that's for Tailspin Toys, okay. Um, you know, who is the appropriate or who's the account rep that I should follow up with to make sure that that closes by this quarter? So it looks like that's Sven. So again, as a sales manager, with the click of two buttons right from within a dashboard, I can see who it is that I need to follow up with to make sure that our team meets the, the uh, quarter uh, quota for this particular uh, quarter. So now that I have kind of an idea from a sales, I'm going to navigate into the account. Again, accounts are customers or prospects, but you have active, viable opportunities with them. You'll notice over here on the left-hand side, um, you can visually look at this information kind of from a hierarchy standpoint. So if you have parent-child relationships, or maybe you have dealers or vendors that are also tied to those accounts, you can uh, see that from within the visual hierarchy information. So from here then, I'm actually going to go down to the opportunity we took a look at earlier. Um, or maybe let's go ahead and take a look at Margie's travel. So when you open up an account record, it should really give you a 360 degree view of everything that's going on with that particular account. Um, so you can see you know, your general account information. Um, again, just like within the lead, we can see any activities associated with that. And again, if it's, it's the account view, I'm pulling in customer service information. I can see if there's any action, interactions that marketing have having with this particular account. I can see who the primary contact is, um, all of her relevant contact information. If there's multiple people within that organization you have relationships with, you can see them here within the subgrid. You can also see insights into that organization. And insights are powered by Inside View. So this gives you a way to get real-time insights, data into what's going on. So maybe there has been an executive level change. You need to know about that. When you log into Serum, you can see it. Um, maybe there are certain uh, social uh, Twitter posts that are, that are out there that you need to be aware of. Again, insights gives you access to that right from within Serum. And before we look at um, some of the opportunities that we have within the system, um, I want to go ahead and look at um, recent cases. Because these recent cases might impact me closing this opportunity. So it looks like there's one active case out there. I'm pretty confident that our customer service team will get that resolved for them. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, open up this opportunity. So I can go ahead and make sure that this closes so our sales team can meet the quarter uh, quota. So again, once we log into the opportunity, it's the salesperson's responsibility to make sure this estimated close date is up to date. So let's go ahead and get that updated for the end of this month. Um, you'll notice that the estimated revenue is actually locked down. So this can be calculated in a couple of different ways. You can use a user provided, which is essentially the salesperson's best guess, or you can utilize the product uh, price list that come with Dynamic CRM. And then also use, utilizing, again, that business process flow to make sure it's a consistent experience for that customer. So um, right now we're kind of at the proposed stage for this particular opportunity, again, just Going through some summary information, it looks like we have our budget, we have, have our forecasted information. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to close this month, so I want to go ahead and add that to my forecast. And based on some of their buying signals, I'm going to update my probability. That looks good to um, 80%. 
Um, again, I can also see any stakeholders that are associated with this particular opportunity. Um, competitor information, you can also track that at the opportunity level. So again, that's important for me as a salesperson, so I know how to position against maybe their strengths or weaknesses based on other opportunities that we've um, competed against um, them before. And then that gets us down into the products. And this is what's driving that estimated revenue and ultimately that um, sales pipeline we saw earlier within the dashboard view. So here we can see we have three different products that make up this opportunity. Um, I just got off the phone and they actually want to update this quantity to 220. So as you'll notice, as that's updated, it's updated the extended amount. And I also want to draw your attention back up to this estimated revenue. It's also updated that for me as well. So as I've gone through the different stages, um, again, since they've added additional quantity, I really want to get the business this month. So I'm going to go ahead, in order to do this, I'm going to offer them a 10% discount. And once that has been added, um, based on me adding that discount percentage, I need to now go to my manager for approval. Um, so before presenting them that quote. So I need to make sure that my manager has gone in and now has approved. And you'll also notice, once that discount was applied, it's also updated that estimated revenue for me as well. So from here, once I have my product added, you'll also notice, notice there's a suggestion feature that comes with Dynamic CRM. So this can uh, tell your sales if there's areas maybe where they could cross-sell, maybe there's an accessory they could add. Maybe based on the certain products they've picked, there should be a substitution. So again, um, some predictive selling suggestions for your team to utilize. Um, and then last but not least, there's also quoting features or functions that come with Dynamic CRM. So you can uh, send the customer a professional looking quote rather than maybe creating them in a separate Word document. That can all be managed within the opportunity inside of Dynamic CRM. So ultimately, again, with um, Margie's travel, um, we've gone through um, all these sales stages. We've proposed, we've uh, presented our quote, we've offered them a great discount to get them to close this month. Um, I just got a phone call with Margie, and she's ready to move, um, or Margie's travel, and they're ready to move forward. So ultimately with this, I can either close the opportunity as one or lost. I'm going to go ahead and close this as one based on my conversation. And again, you'll see that it's um, pulling in the status of one. After that uh, discount was added, it should bring in that actual revenue and also bring in the actual close date. So then we can go ahead and close that opportunity as one. So now we've um, really gone through the process of taking a qualified lead um, all the way through that opportunity. And now it's really about making sure that our customers are satisfied with the service um, and products that they're getting from us. So let's go ahead now and transition, take off the sales hat, put on the customer service. And from here, we want to take a closer look at what it's like to optimize that customer experience. You know, being able to, to look at case statistics, um, track and follow up with customers, um, manage those caseloads with the cues that come with dynamic CRM. So let's go ahead and um, just look at maybe sales performance dashboard. Again, I'm just going to cover a couple of them uh, for the sake of time, but here we can see our cases by service level agreement, maybe the case by uh, type and what priority they are. But what's drawing uh, my attention most is really the, the number of cases that a couple of my agents are, um, are working on. So it looks like they have a pretty high volume right now. Um, Carlos and Veronica don't have a lot. So I need to maybe look at either offsetting some of those cases and directly assigning them to Carlos or Veronica, or potentially maybe just assigning them to a queue so multiple can, uh, people can have access to work on those through resolution. So again, we have to have an idea of what's going on within the uh, customer service area. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of those cases we've, that have been created. So from within the case view, again, you can see how these cases are coming in. It looks like we have some coming in over the web, some through maybe some social um, tools as well, maybe uh, posting some complaints or making sure that gets entered right away. So 
But again, we saw from that dashboard maybe some of those priorities. Um, so I'm going to filter that information quickly. So again, it looks like Jamie, I know what had kind of that high caseload. I want to actually take some of these cases, especially maybe this top one, and I'm actually going to go ahead and add this to a queue. So you can use queues to, um, again, make sure that customers are getting followed up with and uh, cases are getting resolved in a timely manner. So I can either have individual queues set up for my um, customer service reps, or I can even have multiple people assigned to maybe this tier three escalation. So since it is a high priority case, it looks like it's been out there for a while, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this case away from Jamie and assign that to the queue. And that way, again, multiple people have access to it and can work on that through resolution. So now that's been assigned. Let's go ahead and look at this self-service case that um, is the next one up for Jamie. So from a customer uh, service rep standpoint, we can see what it will take to solve this case. So you can see here it's already been given um, you know, the priority. We can see maybe based on their service level agreement when this needs to get completed by. And again, making sure that that customer's journey and experience is the same and consistent, whether it's Jamie or it's Veronica working with them. So again, you can use this uh, business process flow to make sure your sales team are following the same steps and capturing the relevant information. So once that uh, case is created, again, we want to make sure that we're identifying um, all the necessary information. So we've confirmed their ad address, we've reviewed their social information. If we didn't have it, we can now capture it and track it from this point forward. Um, if it is really related to a specific product, um, does this customer have an entitlement with us? Again, if you can manually enter, enter this information or it can be auto-generated once the case is created for the customer. Um, so once the, we've identified, we want to qualify again, do we need to um, assign to others? No, let's make sure that we've sent our first response. Um, this has been escalated already, so we've qualified all that information, and now we need to make sure that we're getting in and researching to make sure this is getting resolved. From here, I can actually look up if there are similar cases that other customers have experienced. So it looks like there might be some similar cases that I can glean some information from in order to solve this more quickly. So it looks like, um, yep, that's exactly what I needed, so I've, I found a solution. Um, so with that solution, I found a knowledge base article that I can attach to this and even email to the customer. Based on our interaction so far, I want to make sure that this customer um, is sent a, a CSAT survey participation. Um, so once that is complete, um, again, we're, we're walking through making sure that this uh, customer issues um, are getting resolved. Um, if they do have certain uh, service level, again, you can track any of that information within the entities here. So if they are maybe a gold service uh, customer, again, you can either manually or have these fields auto-populated based on who the customer is. So we've gone through um, a lot of kind of in, uh, interactions back and forth with this customer. I verified their email. I'm already, you know, I found the case. We resolved the issue. I want to make sure that we send them that CSAT um, so it gets sent. Um, we can go ahead now and mark the case as resolved. And by selecting that, it brings up this next pop-up window. You can give it a further resolution if you'd want. If there is any billable time or uh, timers that you have set up, it will calculate that, and then that billable time would also be calculated. So from here, then, we can go ahead and resolve. So just like that, again, we've walked through a lot in the last uh, few minutes from marketing, um, from a sales experience, um, and also concluding our customer's journey um, working with our customer service team. So the last component that I wanted to talk about today, so regardless of my role, whether it's sales or marketing or service or um, maybe the CEO or IT, um, I start and likely end my day instead of Outlook just like I do every day. So you can, um, there's a free plugin tool that you can install inside of Dynamic CRM that gives you the ability to um, have access to all of the CRM data. 
Um, so right from within here, if I wanted to create new phone calls for particular um, records, I can do that. Um, you'll also notice over here on the left-hand side, I can navigate to any of that CRM data right from within my Outlook folder structure. So again, maybe I want to um, look at a view of the contacts within our CRM database. Again, I haven't left Outlook. I have access to all that information right from within here. And then if I select a record, you'll also notice over here on the right-hand side is a preview pane. Um, so if we have a phone number and we have it integrated with Skype for Business, I can make a phone call directly from here. I can send an email, or again, if you have it tied in with instant messaging, I can send that particular contact um, an email or instant message right from within this preview pane. Again, this is a, a view and it's just a listing of the CRM data right from within Outlook. And then the final component is emails. So if you get an incoming email um, from a client or prospect and um, you want to keep track of that. So up here in the ribbon, you'll notice I can go ahead and uh, track this email or maybe it's an outgoing email. I can further set that regarding a specific opportunity. And then you'll also notice there are some options for these one-off emails to create um, templates and maybe to follow up with uh, prospects or leads more quickly. You can insert articles, again, from a customer service standpoint. Um, or you can also attach any sales literature to those emails. So if I go ahead and send out this email, um, I can go ahead and say CRM information. I can go ahead and send that email. And again, now that that email has been tracked, any of those um, correspondences back and forth will be tracked into the CRM system. And also, this tracking component is a nice way to keep your inbox um, hopefully a little bit cleaner as well. So that concludes our ABCs of CRM um, webinar today. Again, like we said, we, we really wish we could cover the A to Zs, but um, we've just scratched the surface of all the capabilities. There are so many other things like unified service desk, the mobile experience, um, that I would suggest either um, with those or other components that you saw today that you'd like a deep dive in, please reach out to myself. Um, my contact information is up on the screen right now um, or someone else on our team, and we'll make sure that the appropriate person follows up with you. Microsoft does offer a free trial of Dynamic Serum online. There's also some really great promotions out in the market right now. So again, if you have questions on any of those things, like to schedule a, a follow-up session, uh, please reach out to us. And then last but not least, just some additional resources that I wanted to highlight. Um, highly recommend going out, check out our website. We've got tons of news and events. Um, definitely subscribe to our blog. Our marketing team is doing an amazing job publishing information that's uh, relevant maybe to existing or even pr uh, prospective uh, CRM users. And then last but not uh, least, uh, follow us on social media. I recommend checking out our YouTube channel, LVP CRM. We've got some great videos out there. Um, again, helping maybe tips on user adoption, um, additional details around dashboard reporting. There's a plethora of, of information out there in our content library. And then um, hopefully we will see you at our next event this Thursday, December 10th at 1130. Um, it is Marketing Automation versus CRM, What's the Difference? Thank you again for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you.